Namaste. Welcome. For today, let me talk about sitting poses we commonly do during meditation and pranayama. Although I will be talking more about the Sukhasana and the Siddhasana, many of the principles that I will be sharing with you could be applied across the many elements of the practice, especially during meditation, since I will be talking more about energy channeling. All right. And I will share with you how you can align your physical body yeah, based on your own structure, your know, measurement and proportions. So the physical alignment uh, could be applied across the many body types so you can feel like yourself yeah, so we might not look the same but we feel the same internally all right so the first position is the siddhasana or the position of the wise like this so this is the uh, more realistic yeah, way of doing it yeah, it's uh, easier yeah but later on i will be sharing with you the full technique all right, so how we can make use of our own bodies you know, to align our own bodies you know, to suit our own needs. All right, so just extend one leg out to the side. Yeah. So just move it um, lightly to the side so you can keep your head square. All right, but let me angle so you can see, okay? All right, so the, the focal point of this position you know, will be the toes, you know, the top of your foot. Yeah. And then just rest that beside the knee, a little bit higher than the knee joint. So the sole of the foot will lightly rest inside the leg. All right. And from there, yeah, bending this leg, yeah. so lifting this leg up, all right. you might want to turn that leg lightly backwards so you can just allow the inner thigh to roll inwards. And then place the foot yeah, between the calf and your inner thigh. All right. So let's uh, start from the top. This. Sometimes there's a need to adjust this leg slightly forward. Yeah, so you can uh, keep the lower back light and open behind you. Right. This leg rise, cross the foot on top, right. and the uh, edges of the foot yeah, rest between the calf. Then yeah, you may want to open, yeah. and then the uh, small toe, the base of the small toe, lightly create a grip there. All right. So just adjust the other uh, hip as well. You know, so you're square again. All right, here. So you're gonna rest the ball of the foot close to the big toe you know, here, you know, within the space of your calf and your upper thigh. Right. And then you will feel it. You know? So like the legs will lightly bind together. Right. So like this one. All right. Now from here, let me go. So you're moving your hips back a bit, yeah. so you're going to create that triangular shape or space yeah, between your hips and your legs. So like you are forming the triangle, triangle in the legs, yeah, if you form that invisible line, you're going to see that invisible you know, triangular shape too. And then the size of the body, you know, triangle, right. and the chest and the shoulders form the triangle. Right. So it's important you know, to move your hips back. So you, you will feel the weight of the body yeah, resting on your sitting bones. So neither you are arch or you're rounded. Right. So this will require a level of um, inner core strength. And of course, obviously, you know, some flexibility of your legs. All right. Now, there's an important thing. Now, how do we breathe through this one? All right. I've talked about how the energy moves in a spiraling action inside as it makes its way up. Uh, so we're going to apply that in the Siddhasana. So from the mid body, you know, the side trunk, breathing in from the sides. All right, let me lift my shirt off. But this is more internal feeling. Yes. Uh, just so you can see what's happening. Yeah? Inhale, everything goes in and then draw up. All right, so you're going to feel the midsection go a little bit flat and the feeling inside is uh, narrow. Yeah? And then from the lower belly, Draw it up. So inhale in and up. On the exhalation, feel the big ribs. Yeah, out towards the center line. Breathing in, moving the chest wide. So keep breathing in. The collarbone spread wide. The sternum rises, and just relax the shoulders on the exhalation. All right. Inhale, pull the throat back and up. So the back of the neck lengthens. 
so this call looks slightly forward exhale let the head yeah, fall downwards you know, so like you're, you're practicing a light chain mudra all right so inside it's like the mahabanda but in the mahabanda you focus more on the sensations of the energy locks but in the siddhasana you just breathe uh, normally yeah, so the bandhas are less involved, although there will be some inside there, yeah? organic activation of the bandhas. Right. Inhale, coil in and up, exhale, soften, inhale, broaden, exhale, relax, inhale, pull the throat back and up, crown of the head long, exhale, uh, fold the head forwards. Right. You may practice the um, Gyan Mudra with the palm facing down or you may open the palms the chin mudra all right or yeah you may rest your hands you know between the legs and the hips yeah just um inside the hole you know, one hand on top of the other the dhyana mudra right. shift the weight back so this really feels like one of my favorite positions uh, for meditation and this works really best yeah. if you are holding it still yeah, with your back resting against yeah, a soft cushion behind you. And here, yeah, so you can allow the head yeah, to lightly align to the chin mudra. Yeah, relax the elbows and the shoulders. Right. So when you inhale, send the sensation of the breath to rise through your spine. You may suspend the top of the breath while meditating upon the space between the eyebrows. Three, two, one. And allow the exhalation to go slowly. You might relax the eyes and look inside your heart. Or follow the emptying of the breath all the way down to the pit of the hips. Right, so with you doing the Dhyana Mudra or any Mudras, yeah, it's quite meditative. Breathing in, breathing out. Right. So in totality, yeah, your aura yeah, forms like the many geometrical shapes, yeah, but predominantly the triangle. Triangle, triangle, triangle to the sides. From here, triangular, from the front, triangular. Yeah. Like you are inside this circle, yeah. your aura. Good. Yes. So, but for example, this one is still difficult at your stage of your practice. You might try to put like a padding under your hips. And this will feel like this. So after you've set up the position, so just lift the hips and place yeah, a padding the uh, cushion. All right. If this with you are uh, supporting your hips, still heavy. All right. So you may want to try now the Sukhasana. All right. Sukhasana, again, one of my favorite positions. So light, less muscular, but very profound inside. So setup is the same. So all the setups yeah, will be the same. All right, let me change legs. The so same. The toes align with the top of the knee and rest the sole of the foot there. All right, yeah, just square the hips to the front. Yeah. So I angle so you can see, yeah, but when you do it yourself, hips square, okay? Now, lift this leg, you might adjust the knee lightly forward. If the knee feels heavy, you might want to loosen, massage your yeah, knee cap. All right, lifting, a light inner rotation. Lift the leg up, all right? We're crossing it under, like this. Good. So you're like crossing at the shins. And then adjust the hips. All right, now, same as the first um, technique. Yeah. So you are placing you know, the ball of the foot of the back leg, the bottom leg, yeah, against again the space between your uh, upper leg and your calf. Yeah, right here. Yeah, just behind the bone. There you go. And the bottom leg, this leg, yeah, it's more of the heel actually. Yeah. 
So what you want to do here is to just allow the ankle to open up and rest the foot there. Mostly on the fleshy part of your calf. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, find it. Yeah. So the, the feeling is actually light. Like the legs, yeah, keep it grounded. Yeah, there's a mild grip there, a mild stop, so you can move your weight back. And then there you can see that triangular shape again. And there. All right, light, lean your weight back. Right. So if you lean your weight back, even if you shift the weight back, yeah, the legs yeah, keep you grounded, the feet keep you grounded, and the hips and the low back feel slight. And the breath pattern is the same. Yeah, breathing in, coil in and out. Adjust if you need, exhale, feel the ribs fold inside, inhale, breastbone up, open the collarbone slide, exhale, relax the shoulders, breathing in, pull the throat back and up, crown of the head loops forward, exhale, you may form again the Dhyana Mudra, the Dhyana Mudra, or the Chin Mudra. So the breath, when you meditate, yeah, you might visualize it, right? the sensation of the breath. Right? It starts from the base of the spine, it moves a little bit towards the back plane of our bodies, it loops over the skull, and it exits to the front, now, like a circle. It recycles itself as it flows through our bodies. So there's a light shifting back, breathing in, coil in and out, exhale. Yeah. Very similar to the Mahabandha. Yeah. And again, yeah, you can do this position with this. So like this one. Yeah. So this is now where we appreciate yeah, our feet and knees. They have a um, specific purpose yeah, in our practice. Yeah. So they keep us grounded. They keep us connected to the earth. Yeah. With your back resting against the wall and you have this extra padding yeah, to catch your neck. Yeah. So the head is nearer tilting up or Folding too close, you can rest there. Meditate. Yeah. So the Sukhasana is lighter, much lighter. Yeah, less flexibility required, less inner support required, but feels so deep and profound inside. Yeah. Right, now the full Siddhasana. Right, so the full technique. Now setup is the same. Leg out to the side, hip square forward. Right. This will be the setup, although later on we will do some major adjustment. But for us to create that lightness of space, set up this way. All right. This leg goes up. And then you're going to place the foot between the calf and the inner leg. Not the whole foot, only the first half of the foot. Like that. Yeah. Towards the top. Yeah. And from there, move your weight forward. So you're resting your balance in your knees. And then move the right foot backwards yeah, for this demonstration is the right yeah and then from there yeah, rest your heel between the anus and the reproductive organs yeah and then when you slide your sitting bones down you're going to feel your heel press against uh, the tender spot there all right and this will require some adjustment side to side to use it Loosen, loosen, loosen. Yeah, slide the tail back. Press the sitting bones down. Shift the weight back and around. All right, and then investigate. All right, when you lightly close your anal region, yeah. contract it a bit. It's called the Ashvini Mudra. When you lightly contract the anal region, you can feel uh, the muscles will press against the heel. That's the right spot. All right, contract, open, right still there, adjust, yeah, find the lightness, 
uh, they're actually resting the heel there, yeah, between the tail and the fronts of the hips, and between the anus and the genital region, right here, yeah. So where the uh, chakras of the um, muladhara, yeah, and later on the top heel will energize the swadeshasana chakra, and the uh, mulabandha, yeah, the first energy lock is in there. So this one is so helpful in stimulating yeah, the uh, our hips, uh, the reproductive system, yeah, and opening the lower chakras of the spine. All right, what happens to the front leg now? You're gonna loosen lightly. You know, you might wanna pull that foot a little bit out, all right, yeah, but still inside. And then the top heel now will find yeah, the pubic bone right here. The front, yeah, the front of the hips. Yeah, um, definitely for men, you have to do some adjustment here. Yeah, so you might want to lift your um, genital organs up, yeah, so that the bottom heel can find yeah, the um, base of the scrotum behind, the front of the genital or the anus, and then you might want to lift your. Uh, reproductive organs a little bit out of the way just to your chest. Alright, so the heel now will press against the pubic bone. Right. Now yeah, for men it's mostly behind, yeah, here. A little bit behind the heel. Right. Let me do again. Right. That. Move your weight to your knees. Fold your right foot again. Finding that perineum, slide your sitting bones down, loosen this leg, side to side, adjust. Good. Now, this leg, the bottom foot, yeah, like the first technique, yeah, the ball of the foot towards the dictal rest between the calf and the inner leg. So that becomes your grip. Right. Top heel, loosen a bit. Right. And pressing the top heel against the pubic bone. In here, if you want to further investigate, your ankle bones are aligned, like the bone of the ankle of the top foot and the bone of the ankle of the bottom foot towards the inside. They are pressing together actually, so the ankles are perfectly aligned in the siddhasana. Alright, and your top heel pressing against the uh, pubic bone and that stimulates the second chakra. All right, and then adjust. You may move this knee forward, the low back, shift the weight back, and around. Same right pattern. Yeah. Now one more way of um, investigating if you are at the right spot, the ankle bone. When you feel the ankle bones are uh, aligned, that's it. And adjust. Yeah. So close and open. Yeah, still there. Good. Ankle bones, feel light. Side to side. Yeah. Coil in and up. This is now where the lifting of um, the lower belly muscles will be very helpful in creating the openness of the lower back. Because you are really binding your legs here, yeah? So the hips enjoy the less mobility. In and up, exhale, soften the ribs, breathing in, open up, broaden the shoulders, exhale, relax the shoulders, inhale, pull the throat in and back, rise the back of the neck long, exhale, loop the skull lightly forward, and lightly tuck the chin in. Yeah. In the Siddhasana, so you are forming yeah, the Gyana Mudra or the Chin Mudra. Shift the weight back, remember. Right. Inhaling, sending your awareness higher up, the forehead region, feeling your weight shift back a bit. Exhale, the knees are light, they're aligned. 
Like they are very close to the floor. They're touching the floor actually. And as you exhale, send your internal gaze inside the heart or all the way down and down. Breathing in at the top of the breath, closing the hips, and then send your internal gaze up and stay four, three, two, one, and exhale. Or you can do your attention longer. If you're doing your pranaya, for example, you can do that. Or you can do your stillness. But it doesn't help. Good. Yes. Yeah. Sitting positions for meditation externally look simple. Yeah. But they're really uh, challenging to master. And they will require physical strength, flexibility, mobility, and internal awareness so this doesn't happen overnight we need to work hard for this thus our preparatory practice of the asanas the pranayamas and the kriyas the cleansing yeah they are required they are the compulsory uh, preparatory requirements for the sitting asanas to happen lightly so we can hold them longer when we meditate Keep the practice. Believe in your method. Believe in your practice. Have faith. Be patient. One day, it'll come. See you next time. Namaste.